Okay, so for your first journal, what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to be taking some of the existing photographs that I've taken from the previous semester, and you're going to be doing your own Photoshop on them to clean them up for your portfolios. Um, so I'm going to show you guys essentially some of the tricks and uh, sort of quick stuff that I do when I'm taking some of these things, uh, some of the photographs that I've been documenting for your guys' stuff, and how to clean them up. So there's a couple of features that we're going to go through, but these are going to be the um, set of images that we're going to be working with here. And I'm, each one has a specific thing that I'm going to sh actually show you how to work with. Um, so we're going to go over in here, let's see if I can get this to pull up, I guess I just hit control O to open up one of these guys. So we have our image, um, under the image adjustments, we're going to be going through brightness and contrast, levels, curves, exposure, hue and saturation, and then the auto contrast and auto colors. So I'll just go ahead and dive right into this. Um, the first thing you guys want to do is you just want to make sure that you're going to start with the um, best quality image that you possibly can. So get a nice camera. Don't take pictures with your phones and expect that that's going to be something you can use in your portfolio. Um, and it's just not going to get the light, the right white balance and you're, and you're just not going to have the right raw materials. So just paying attention to that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you one other trick that I didn't mention that's not in here. Um, that's a content aware fill and you'll probably fall in love with that tool. That's how I made, uh, Craig's disk thing appear to be floating when I was going through and uh, helping you guys out with the lighting stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do, I, I just like doing this, is doing an auto contrast. That just tries to fix the white balance a little bit here um, so we can just sort of get a, a better raw material. And then we go in adjustments. Um, when you do levels, this is going to control the level of an, an intensity of the dark and the light. And so this enables you to make your whiter, whites whiter and your darks darker. So you can get a nicer contrast value again. And so we're trying to celebrate this, so I'll hit OK. And ultimately, since you guys are going to be hopefully probably taking this to print on some level, you want to make sure that this is going to be um, rigged up so you can print it out. Uh, and the way that I really like doing that is trying to make sure that my edges when I'm doing this are at a 255, 255, 255 color. You see how that's a little bit yellow. When you print that, you, it will actually print a little bit yellow. So we want to make sure that that goes away. So we do an adjustment with the exposure. Then we can. I just use the arrow keys on my keyboard to slightly tap that up. We can make that just a little bit brighter. Okay. So now we'll do a color analysis, and now we have that good color swatch. So we have good colors on the edges. Uh, we don't need that all the way through, though we could. If we wanted to um, say we have like this area and that's a little bit dark, um, if we use the magic wand tool here, we can, and if we want to select a contiguous space, we can select that. If I hold shift, I can select this and it's going to select within a certain tolerance range. Uh, and so now anything I do in here will, oh, let's grab a brush and I'll just draw in black so that you'll be able to see. I can, it's only going to e edit in that A region. And obviously you don't want to do that. So if you hit Control Z, that will undo that. All right. Hit uh, Control D to deselect. Or we can just come down here, deselect. All right. And so essentially this image is almost ready to go. I really like eliminating logos and stuff like that from here. And so if I hit Control Plus to zoom in, H is your hand tool, so you can pan. We're going to eliminate this K-Swiss logo here because we don't really want that. Um, if you hit L for lasso, that's right here. Um, there's different types of lassos that we could click and hold. The polygon lasso is probably going to be the one you're going to use most consistently. So we're going to go through and just select this. And if you zoom in a little bit closer, it'll give you a better result. But we only want to select the thing that we want to replace. Okay, so now we have that selected. If we hit Shift F5, this is going to do a fill and it can do content aware. So it's going to analyze the area around that and it's going to sort of fix it. So hit OK. And then we hit Control D to deselect. And we have now eliminated the logo. OK. And it also infilled this. So we did a lot of stitching without having to do a whole lot of work. Hit Control Shift S to do a save as. And I always like to create a new folder with my edits. You never want to edit your original in case you want to go back and do something or if you need the data. So we'll go ahead. And you can save it in here. I'm actually not going to put it in there, and I'm just going to rename it so that we can do a comparison once we're, we're done with this. So hit save. Okay. And I did this in a white backdrop studio, so obviously this is done in school. This may not be the scenario in which you guys are going to be doing some of your photographs. So the next 
one of these guys that I'm going to open, I did at home. So this is obviously another continued prosthetic. I have two black t-shirts here that I've set up as my backdrop and I'm doing this on my dining table. Um, and so I, again, using a nice camera, um, I have it top lit um, using my chandelier. And so if I just hit control A to select this, I notice that this is kind of off axis. So it's control A, control T. And then that gives me a transform and I can start to rotate this around. Okay. Hit V to, that's essentially going to always be your home. Or control D. And now we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to hit re-invert re this. The reason why that's filled in in white is because that uh, was white back there. So, but we'll fix that here in a second. C to crop this. I don't need all this extra stuff and I don't really need to edit it. So I'll hit enter. All right, and now we're going to, I'm just gonna take the brush and very hastily brush this out. And so all the options are up here. And I'm just gonna darken that. Darken that edge. Darken that edge. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an auto contrast. That didn't do much. Now I'm going to take and adjust my levels. And I'm going to really pull the darks to make them darker. And then I'm just going to pull the light, the white back a little bit. All right. And you can see that, that did a lot for me. Right. Didn't completely solve all of it though. And so we're still going to have to come in here and do a little bit of cleanup. But we can end up doing that with our brush here. And again, so we have this. If we, now we use our wand tool and we select uncontiguous space. It'll select everything no matter what that region is. So I'm just going to do a couple of shift clicks here to get some of these guys. And then I'm going to actually reduce the exposure and that will drop the black, make the black blacker. Right, hit control D and then again. So we have to use the brush tool here in a couple of places. Oh, and you can see like we want to be sort of judicious about control alt Z. We'll enable you to step back. I accidentally selected too much. So just want to be thoughtful about that. Um, and so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and use the wand tool. I'll make that contiguous. There we go. All right. And then, so that'll be, and I'll just now I'll use the brush and I'm just going to blow this way up. It's another good way to do this. So I'm not, I can only edit the area that I have selected. Control D. All right, and so I, I assume you guys will probably invest a little bit more time since I'm just going through and giving you guys a demo, but underscore save. Yeah, okay. All right, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I did um, Bryce's. So when I rendered this out, the, the way that I set this up is I, I knew that I wanted to mirror this in the computer. I only have one of these built, so I set this up in the photograph and I took it with lighting coming from one direction and then I literally rotated it around and shot it from the same direct the opposite direction but the light is the same so I can take this control a control C to copy control V to paste and then if I use the M marquee tool I can select just the part that I want and I do a control shift I to select the inverse or if you go from here select inverse I'm just going to go ahead and delete the inversion of that. Okay. And I'm just going to control A, control C, control V. So I just duplicated this by selecting the background. I can toggle that off. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this. Control Shift I, delete. Control D to deselect. And now I'm going to rotate the cam canvas, uh, image rotation, and it's going to go counterclockwise. Okay. So now if we select our other layer, 
Control T. Okay, so now we have lighting set up for this, right? But it's still opposite, or still the same. So I'm going to do Control A, Control C, Control New, just open up a new document. And it's automatically going to format this so that it's going to be in alignment with this. Control V. If I hit Control T now, it will automatically grab those edges. Control A, Control C. Jump back into my document. Control V. So I'll toggle that off. There you go. Alright, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'll do this. Delete these guys that I don't need anymore. Don't do that. Never delete your original, but then I'm going to merge the visible. But you just right click. And there it is. Merge visible. Now this is one object. And then I'm going to crop this down so that we only have the stuff that we want to work with in here. And I'm going to show you guys. So I this is obviously slightly bigger because I wasn't I was hovering over it. So I'm going to show you guys how to edit that as well. And this control T. And I'll just pull a ruler down from there. Control semicolon to turn on your guides. So now those are roughly at the same scale. Control D, Control semicolon, and G is the paint bucket tool. It's probably set to gradient, so we'll set that up. Invert this. I'm just going to paint bucket that. All right. So now we'll do another auto contrast, and I'm going to do an auto color as well, and that's going to get my whites to be appropriately white. Adjustment levels. And let's pull that in a little bit more. Okay. Brush. Probably not that big, but we'll just use the marquee tool so I can be hasty about this. Okay. And you're going to end up using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. B. I'm just going to go ahead and be quick about it. All right. And so this is looking pretty good. Do Control Shift S. Save as. JPEG. Underscore. Save. Hit OK. All right, and so the last one we're going to do is this guy. And this actually image really needed very little. Um, but I'm going to show you how we can clean up things like that, where the printer just got a little bit. Details that you wouldn't notice unless you're really up, up on it. Uh, so I'm going to do another auto contrast, just to get me going a little bit brighter. Control L to activate levels. Just make that darker. So then we have really nice black canvas on there. I'll pull this back. Brighten that up a little bit more. So this is actually pretty clean now. The only thing is we had this one little thing that we really wanted to get rid of. So now I'm just going to use the marquee tool and I'm just going to select that. And if I hold shift I can do a bunch of little selections in here. And shift F5. Control D. And there you go. Alright, so control shift save. Underscore. Same. All right, and so that's a couple of the tips and tricks. And so we have our original and our edit. Original, original, our edit. Our original and our edit. All right, and so that's what you guys are going to be doing. You're just going to be cleaning up a couple of images um, from some of the stuff, and I'll provide you with all of the uh, all the files that I had from the photography shoots that we've done over the course of the semester, so you can pick your project. All right, cheers.